I'm not going to be able to talk about all of the issues. There, there are hundreds of potential issues, but I've, I've split this into some legal issues, some economic issues, national security issues, and technology issues. So I'm not just talking about the legal issues yeah. because um, the, the law doesn't provide all the answers that we might like to have, mm. which then suggests that maybe we need to develop the law. If we're going to develop the law, then we want to take into account well, yeah. what, what, what are the economic issues, what are the national security issues? Do we have the technology to support a more robust regulatory And regime? I think th that's a critical point, right? It's not just that you can develop this and it affects this. They all play off each other. It's a symbiotic right. relationship, right? And then what you can do technology will then affect what you're legally allowed to do and what mm. you're economically allowed to do. Yes. And it's, it's, it, they all feed back on each other. So it's not that you can just take one piece, solve it, and then say, it's done. It, it's an iterative almost kind of application here. Yeah. So space traffic management, if we think of space traffic management um, and, and analogies with, say, for example, air traffic management, when an aircraft enters your airspace, then you exert some level of control over it. You yep. say you have to fly at this flight level and land at this airport. Yep. Um, the question then is what is your legal basis for exerting that level of control? Okay. And this, in the space context, comes up against the principle of freedom of use and exploration in outer space. Okay. So one country might say, you're telling me how to use my satellite, but I am free to use and explore outer space as I see fit. Okay. Um, so what is the basis on which somebody doing space traffic management could say, you have to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Interesting. You, you might say, well, we don't want two satellites to crash into each other. Yep. We need to establish safety zones okay. or a certain area around satellites. And again, that's complex with orbits, as we explored earlier. So right. that's not straightforward. Got it. No, it's, right. it's not straightforward because if you've got a satellite and you say, not only do I occupy this orbital slot, but you also can't come within this area of, of where my satellite is. That's right then it starts to look like you're exerting some ownership over That's right. that area. But then that also puts onus that, you know, you have to correct for your orbit at a certain time. What if you don't do it to fulfill your obligations to stay in that zone versus a failure? Yeah, that becomes quite tricky. It does. It does. Um, some states don't register yep. their satellites. Uh, and even if states do register their satellites, not every state has the same capacity yeah, in its yes. regulators. That's right. To, to look over the shoulders of commercial entities. And so, then, and, and I guess if you then put that onus in, you're actually limiting the development of other countries who may very much benefit from that technology mm. in space, which then is going against their all humankind kind of aspect, right? Right, right, yeah, right. right. So states who come to anything late quite often come in a situation where other states have set the rules Yeah and essentially created barriers to entry yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for later states. And those later states say, well, that's unfair. You've benefited yeah, from this, this new technology for decades, yeah. and now you're creating barriers to entry for us. Yeah, and, and I think that's a very important point to think about when you're doing this, yeah. Yeah. Um, space traffic management, what if you are the space traffic manager um, mm. and you say, this satellite has to go here, and as a result, it does go there, and then it collides with another uh, yeah. satellite. Okay. Who's yep. liable in that situation? Yeah, okay. it's, it's difficult. Uh, and related to the first issue about control, what is the basis of your enforcement as well? What, what happens if you say you have to move your satellite and the operator doesn't move the satellite? What is, how do you enforce that? The answer would have to be through national laws. Yeah. Um, there's, there's no clear answer in international law for that. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So those are the legal issues. Economic issues, who's going to pay for something yeah, like yeah, space yeah. traffic management? Um, who, if it's a commercial entity, then how do you monetize space traffic yeah. management? No, and that's a fair point, right? It, yeah. If it's a government service, it's one thing, but if you're expecting private companies to do it, which is kind of right now the void that's being filling, there has to be some incentive otherwise. Mm. Why do they do it? Right, right. So, you know, um, you could say, well, why doesn't someone, uh, why don't they agree on a treaty that, that, that makes it, uh, put, puts the obligation on a 
a particular commercial entity to, to do space traffic management. Well, that's not going to work yeah. if that commercial entity can't make money. Yeah, out. exactly. I mean, it's easy, you know, when, when we explore communications, all right, it's kind of straightforward. You're downloading data via my receiver. You're going to pay a certain rate, you know, right. that's how it works. You don't expect data coming down to be free either. So, yeah, it has to be, there has to be incentive somewhere for mm. someone to do this. Right, right. Um, if you say that one particular satellite has a right of way over another, yep. then you're saying that other satellite has to burn some yes, fuel. Yes, that's right. Uh, and so there are implications that's for that. They are dramatic, operator. which affects operation, economics, purpose of that satellite, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then, of course, um, any operator or owner of a satellite will be concerned about liability yeah. and how to fact that, that into their finance. Yeah. And then there's the national security issues, knowledge of space objects, existence and position. If you're going to have a effective space traffic management. You need to know regime, everything. You need to know everything. Not all states are going to share that. That's right, especially with certain other states. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, e exactly. Um, all states want freedom of action. Uh, so this is, this is interesting because um, the United States, for example, uh, in, the, in the same... Uh, previously, I referred to the United States saying in an executive order that, yes. that they don't believe that the Moon Agreement is is uh, is customary international law. In the same executive order, they they said th that space is not a commons. Um, okay. Now, one of the ways in which you can regard anything as a commons is by saying. Uh, Everyone has freedom to manoeuvre and to act in, yep. in the commons. Another way you can define a commons is saying, well, there's public ownership rather than private ownership in a commons. Uh, now, the United uh, States doesn't like the second way of regarding <laughs> something as a commons. Okay. But absolutely do want outer space to be regarded as a commons for freedom of manoeuvre and action. Okay. So they don't necessarily want some commercial entity that's beholden to some yeah. other national government yeah, saying yeah. what they can and can't do in outer space. Mm. So that's, that's difficult. And it seems, you know, if you're the US, which is one of the major spacefaring nations, whether they like it, people like it or not, they have a big important say, because if you're going to have create a whole framework and they're not participating in it, it's kind of pointless, right? right? Just right. as the same if Russia didn't agree or yes. someone like that. Yes, yes, Interesting. exactly. If you are a, um, if you're a state involved in outer space and, and, and you want to know where everything is, you not only want to know where everything is, but you want to know what normal looks like. Yeah, okay. Normal activity. Yeah. Because if, if there's something, a, a baseline which sets out what is normal activity, then it makes it easy to identify what aberrant activity or what, what exactly. abnormal activity is. And then predict like. collisions or accidents or whatever, but you have to know what normal is. And normal will be very different depending on the use and stuff right. of the satellite, right? Yes, yes. And that, that has implications not just for space traffic management, but also for determining what is hostile and yes. what is not. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's the issue of dual use. Yeah. So, for example, if space traffic management includes, as a means of enforcement, for example, a space tug that can actually move a, a satellite yep. if it won't move itself, then that same space tug can also be used for hostile purposes. That's right. For when someone doesn't want to move. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. So you've got dual use issues. And then technology issues. What is the level of space situational awareness or space domain awareness that we have at the moment? Yep. Do we need more sensors in order to get more information? Um, is there sharing of data between governments? Yep. How precise is orbital yes. prediction at yeah, the moment and yeah, you, you, you'd be in a better position than I am. Yeah, to, yeah. but no, but you're right. I mean, it, it's one thing to say it's going to hit and if your uncertainty is 10 centimetres versus 10 metres, it's a pretty big difference, right? right? It's a dramatic difference. Yes. And yeah, yeah, I could, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Uh, and then there's manoeuvrability. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. things don't manoeuvre like Star Wars no. in outer space. No, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, and then manoeuvrability affects the economics of what you would have to build in to make it manoeuvrable. 
and that affects your mission parameters and weight and all these other sorts of things. It, you're, you really see how, you know, one affects another part of this piece of the puzzle. Right, exactly. So if you're going to design uh, or, or, or negotiate a treaty and design a new space traffic management regime, then you have to think about all of this. You just you can't just think about the law. It's it's all of it, as as you said. Wow. Yeah.